The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, March 29, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Well, thank you. And as you can tell, I am not in Chicago today. I'm actually in Santa Barbara, California. There's some nice sunshine coming through us. We like that. Mm -hmm. Today, Jim will discuss the yield curve message and what the message is signaling to the market. So Jim, at the time of this recording, the two-year, 10-year yield curve has inverted for the first time since 2019. How should investors view this? Well, there's two things I think that we need to kind of explain. The yield curve, the two-year, 10-year yield curve inverted 13 days after the Fed's first rate hike. Now to put that in perspective, that is far and away the fastest that the yield curve has ever uh, inverted after the Fed started raising rates. In 2019, it was only after the ninth rate hike that the yield curve finally inverted. And the prime before that, 2005, it was after the 15th of 17 rate hikes that the yield curve finally inverted in that, in that episode as well too. So what does it mean that the yield curve inverted so fast? I think what we have to do is talk about the different curves and then it makes more sense. So if we go to the first chart, the first chart is short curves. It's called the new Fed curve. And what I mean by short curves is any yield curve that is two years or less. So the longest you could look at, which is the blue line on this chart, is the two-year yield minus the three-month bill. So two years and less. The orange line is this curve that the Federal Reserve prefers to use, which is the implied forward rate six quarters ahead on three-month bills minus three-month bills. Boy, that's a mouthful. What does that mean? you look at the swap curve, it's just saying, where does the market think the three month yield will be in six quarters or 18 months or a year and a half versus now? And it looks a lot like what you see with the two year, three month curve. So you don't have a Bloomberg, this is the way you can track those short curves. And those short curves are going straight up right now. And what they're telling us, those short curves, is they expect the Fed to raise rates a lot. So if you go to the table, the next table, this shows you the uh, the latest pricing of Fed hikes. There's a 71% chance of three rate hikes. Remember, a rate hike is 25 basis points. So three would be, we did 25 in March and 50 would count as two rate hikes in this scenario. So 71% chance of a 50 basis point rate hike at the May 4th meeting, a 80% chance of another 50 basis point hike at the June 15th meeting. And as I put in red, a 21% chance, they might actually go 75. And I might add, that wouldn't be unprecedented. And then November 14th, 1994, they did raise rates 75 basis points. And all total, there's 10 rate hikes, <coughs> excuse me, through the end of this year, taking the funds rate to two to 275. So this is consistent with the short rate curve. Very, very steep and it's pricing in lots and lots of rate hikes. Now, if we go to the next chart, the next chart will show a divergence. So the green line has one of those short rates in it, the three month bill, 10 year spread. That's steepening. The other three curves, the blue, the orange, and the red curves, the lines, excuse me, those all have yield curves that have longer than two years. So two year, 10 year, three year, 10 year, five year, 10 year. They're all inverting, and this chart's four hours old, and if I had updated it five minutes ago, then the two-year, 10-year curve would be essentially at zero as well, too. So why is it that all the long curves are inverting? Now, the signaling that you're getting from the market here is that the Fed is going to raise rates a lot, that's the short curves going up, and they're probably going to break something. That's what I think the long curves are trying to tell us. What does breaking something mean? That the Fed is going to raise rates 
And short-term interest rates rising above long-term interest rates is going to be a point where it is naturally tightening for the economy. It will be restrictive. Sending out loans or financing positions is going to be either a zero or a loss position. It is not now. It's very steep, the short curves. But the long curves are saying that's where we're headed, to a very restrictive position. And ultimately, restrictive positions tend to lead recessions and tend to uh, lead what the, the parlance we use on Wall Street is breaking things. And that will wind up breaking something if we're not careful. So, Jim, how do we know if the Fed, how does the Fed know when to stop and why would they go that go too far? Yeah, so that's really the question. Why are the, these curves different? The Federal Reserve is raising rates because we have an inflation problem, which we'll talk about in a second. They want to rein in inflation. Okay, fine. They know that raising interest rates will slow the economy if they are aggressive enough. Now, there's some people argue, well, uh, 25 basis points won't do anything. True. But the market thinks that they're going to do a whole, whole heck of a lot more than 25 basis points. So when does the Fed know mission accomplished? This is the problem. They don't. And the history of the Federal Reserve is they raise rates and raise rates and raise rates. And then something breaks. And then they go, oops, we went too far. Something breaks. Let me give it. Let me put some definition on that. And serious signs of an economic slowdown or a recession, a bear market in risk assets, which we don't have right now, um, and or a problem with the plumbing of the financial system, which we had in the 98 curve uh, inversion when the big hedge fund long-term capital went insolvent. And we had in 2019, right after that curve inversion, when we had the repurchase market blow up and rates went to 9%. So some combination of slowing of the economy, a bear market, financial plumbing breaks, all of the above, some of the above. That's what we mean by the Fed raises rates to something breaks. When interest rates are inverted, it is a, it is a market signal and it also puts a stress point on the financial system. And eventually if you stress it enough, something breaks and then you have problems. And can you talk about why inflation matters? So the Fed's raising rates, we'll go to our final um, chart here. Um, the Fed is raising rates because we have an inflation problem. Um, okay, fine. Now, there's a big debate in the marketplace. Well, doesn't the Fed really, well, the debate centers around the idea that we have $30 trillion of debt and a highly levered economy, and we can never pay off all this debt. True. Uh, so therefore, the way you get rid of the debt is you inflate it away. What that means is that inflation reduces the value of that debt and you reduce it, you reduce it, and it becomes some manageable number because we're all paying $200,000 for Camrys and we're paying 20 bucks for lattes. All of a sudden, $30 trillion of debt doesn't look like it's as big a deal as it does when the prices are much, much lower than they are now. That's what we mean by inflating away the debt. <coughs> and so a lot of people think, well, that's what the Fed wants is to... Uh, create more inflation. I don't think they do. So if you look at this is from the latest Gallup poll that came out. So if you look at the top line, uh, the top line shows you the number of people that think the biggest economic problem in the country is inflation. It's gone from eight to 17%. And then if you look at the third line, you'll see a doubling of fuel oil prices as well. That's from January to March. So what you're seeing is a rapid increase in people that are getting worried about inflation. We've talked about this many times in our news clips um, and on our conference calls. The number one issue in the country is inflation. A distant second is either racial justice or the Russia-Ukraine war. And this is killing the majority party, the Democrats, whether it's the midterm elections or the president's approval rating. And the Fed sees this and knows this. And we've got a number of progressive Democrats, Liz Warren, Bernie Sanders, AOC, saying we need price controls. And the Fed does not want price controls. So they're under enormous pressure. Do something about inflation. And what the market is telling us on short rates is they are. They're going to hike and hike and hike and hike and hike. And short and long rates are saying, well, they might go too far and they might break something. Not tomorrow, but eventually they're going to break something. 
Uh, but, but the Fed surely doesn't do that. The Fed is the market's friend. They always print money to make markets go up and growth come back. That's true. They had done that all the way through 2021. But because we never had inflation, they could always wait for the real growth side of the economy to wobble and then respond to it. But now that we've got inflation, they have no choice but to deal with the inflation issue. If they raise rates too much, and if they cause a recession or threaten a recession, then that's what they just have to do, is they have to cause or threaten a recession. So bottom line is I think that what we're looking at here is a Fed that's on a course to raise rates till it hurts. That's what the two different yield curves, the short and long-term curves are telling us, and that we're probably gonna see a period of turbulence. Now, the good news is we're not there yet. Uh, we, in other words, the market's not signaling intimately that we've got a problem now. That would happen when short curves invert. When the Fed is raised so much that the market, when the short curves invert, that means then the, the market is saying imminently the Fed's got to start easing because something's already broken. But we're not, we're not there yet. But we're going to continue to be in this period of turbulence. If inflation is persistent, and it doesn't go away. Yeah, it might peak in the next few months and back off, but if it's persistent, the Fed has no choice but to continue. If it turns out to be transitory, and I don't think that's the case, and inflation peaks and it decelerates rapidly through the second half of the year, then the Fed's got an off ramp that they could stop raising rates. But without that, and I don't think you're gonna see that transitory nation of inflation, they're gonna hike and hike and hike and hike. And if markets get wobbly, Markets get wobbly. So buckle up. I think it's going to be a fun rest of 2022. And the inverted yield curve is just underscoring that idea. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are client driven. If you have any questions or feedback on future topics, please let us know. As a reminder, if any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day, everyone.